there's a rebate on this. Full synthetic. That Ilsac GF5. $23 versus 16 per five quarts. I'm gonna do it myself because I really don't want some clown changing my oil, getting underneath my vehicle. I'd rather do it myself. You do whatever you want. It doesn't matter to me. This is just what I do and I've been doing it for years and it's always worked. <laughs> Yep, so we went with this. Great day to change the oil in the new Tundra. We're gonna have to take off the skid plate, a few bolts there to hold that on. Drain the oil, it's pretty straightforward, the cartridge style uh, oil filter. We'll get to that. All it is is, is uh, crawling around on your garage floor or in your driveway and draining some fluid and tightening back everything up and putting the right amount, which is 8.5 quarts for the 2019 Toyota Tundra. I've never done this vehicle before, so Rather than taking it half an hour there to the dealership, you just never know what you're gonna get. Sometimes you come back, you have skid plate bolts that are stripped out. Maybe they've even put in the, own, your, uh, in the wrong oil. So uh, I choose to do it myself. Then I know that it's done correctly. And really the time, and I think everything here was you know, 40, $45. Time is worth that to me. So let's uh, get to this and figure out what's going on down underneath there. 12 millimeter bolts holding up the skid plate. Right there is your oil drain bolt. It's a 14 millimeter. You may want to put a splash guard on the A arm so when that oil comes shooting out, you're not getting it all over or just wipe it up afterwards. A little bit of a messy job, but it's the way it works. All right, so here's a helpful hint the centermost bolt. Unfasten this one, the center bolt last. And then it'll just hang down out of the way so you can get back up underneath there. What I'm gonna probably do is just take off the skid plate. To make this even easier, I just took off the skid plate. There's three fasteners, 10 millimeter. And these hooks are just uh, hooked up there. And right here is your oil filter that we're going to get to to drain that whole cartridge thing. I didn't watch any other videos in this, but uh, I just knew the general idea. Drain the oil, put new in, take off the cartridge. Not necessarily in that order, right? To assist flow, you can unscrew the cap if you'd like. I don't know if that makes much of a difference. Actually, that did not shoot out as much as what I thought it was supposed to do. 8.5 quarts is like approaching diesel capacity there. So we're putting 8.5 quarts of new oil into the engine, leaving us with a 1.5 quart leftover. Just make a mark there so when you're pouring it in, you can have a quick reference. Use a new crush washer if you'd like. I've been doing this for several decades and never have done that, but maybe once or twice. So it's up to you. Now we're going to move on to this uh, oil filter removal. May have to bend that tab back a little bit. And this will just unscrew. And here comes the mess. So we'll let that drain just a bit. So if you'd like to make less of a mess, you can actually unscrew this underneath and use the plastic piece to drain the oil filter out. But I guess I didn't realize that. And I just did it the old way and let oil go all over the place. But same, same results. Yeah, we're going <laughs> to switch change out on this. Here's one right here. We have one right there. It's like up inside of there if you're curious. <laughs> clean it up and screw everything back in make sure it's tightened down to 25 newton meters 
All right, folks, this is the correct way to pour fluid. I see so many people doing this thing. Okay, all that amounts to is a bunch of glopping. So turn it upside down. Nice and easy, not making a mess. Again, this is an 8.5 quart capacity. Five plus 3.5 out of the other leaving 1.5 quarts left in the other jug. And of course, as you get down there in fluid, then you can go ahead and rotate it. I see so many people and there was not even a drop spilled. Let's argue about 5,000 and 10,000, whatever miles. I like to go around 7,500. But if you wanna send your oil to Blackstone Labs, have it analyzed they can let you know exactly when you should be changing your oil based on your driving habits and there we go eight and a half quarts up here let it run for three or four minutes check for leaks and then we're going to go ahead and make sure our level is right up towards the top of that line right there you're going to need to change the oil in a 2019 tundra 10 millimeter socket to take off the skid plate if you so choose. If for some reason you decide to leave your skid plate off, you can just zip tie this plastic little air dam. Uh, we're gonna have a 12 millimeter socket for the skid plate bolts themselves, a 14 millimeter for your oil drain plug. And then also a special service tool is something that you're going to want to have to get that oil filter cartridge off. All right, since I was kind of rushed and mine hasn't come in yet, I was able to use the handles on a pair of channel locks and uh, carefully unloosened that thing. So that's not the way that I recommend, but hey, I'm leaving, it's not here. It's time to go, need to get it done. So fortunately it wasn't on there too tight. It was the first time it's ever been changed and I will have that wrench the next time. So we- 2019 5.7 oil change. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Uh, the filter is a little bit of a you have to have a special service tool, of course, for that. And a hassle to deal with that skid plate. But hey, according to Toyota, zero W1616 weight oil for the 2020 models onward would require a thinner oil. So you might have to change that out uh, if you're coming up on a 2020 and onward. So just be prepared for that to do a changeover, switchover. But hey, I'm getting ready to head out fishing. So we'll see what that brings. Going to take the Tundra, do a little hauling. Should be good to go. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you. Another good job of pouring, right? Thank you. Good day. Yep. It's cloudy, it's been cool, a lot of rain. The bay is super muddy. But uh, we're gonna check it out. Maybe, maybe find some clearer water. I'm sure it's gonna be colder water. I'm not expecting much here today. Actually, I'm expecting to not catch any fish at all and to go home early. So we're gonna see what's happening. Uh, with that, but it's nice to get uh, away for a little while, take a short trip, catch up on some rest, some relaxation, uh, looking for those small mouths. Everything's about two weeks behind up here, so not expecting a lot, but we'll see what we can do. Maybe we can get into a few. Nice beast. Nice smallie, getting ready to spawn. We'll take it. Slow day. Look at that big old gut though. Pre-spawn smallmouth bass. Fishing's a little slow. They're clapping because it's over.